on full screen. Yes, and participants are joining as we speak. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome Tonki from Dunmore Country House, who has pro prepared a fantastic uh, presentation on propagators and um, everything under the sun that you can grow in Ireland because we don't have enough sun. Um, so I just would like to say just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we've been joined by Claudia, who's going to sign the presentation today. And um, this, um, welcome to all the members of the Deaf Shed and, and anybody. Um, so just bear with us as we work out the camera angles and different things like that. We, we're trying our best. This is a first for us. And um, as I say, welcome and thank you again, Tom Cui. I am going to just turn off my camera, turn off my sound. Tonki is going to share his screen. There are some slides and the recording will be available afterwards. And what we'll do is we'll discuss questions afterwards. So Tonki, merci beaucoup. Merci, Frank. So welcome um, everybody. Um, today we're going to see uh, how to build up uh, a chip uh, propagator. So a uh, propagator is a very important piece uh, tool in the garden because it allows you to sow uh, a lot of uh, seeds uh, earlier on and it allows you as well to sow exotic plants like melon, uh, tomatoes, peppers, aubergine that uh, otherwise would uh, not germinate very well in our uh, climate. So my name is Tanguy de Toulguet, I'm French. Uh, we came 25 years or even a little bit more than that, 25 years ago. Um, I am from the uh, tillage uh, farm background and my study would be would have been uh, agricultural science. I have started gardening when I was five or six or very small and at 16 I started a um, world garden to produce food for a family restaurant. Um, in Ireland I worked in Castle Doro in Doro County Leash. It's where we are based in Leash and uh, I was a uh, head gardener and I did a lot of uh, renovating work on the Castle Doro uh, ground for 10 years. After that, I left Castle Doro and I started my own uh, Dunmore Country School, which is a gardening school where I, where I organize face to face and um, now, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, uh, Zoom uh, online classes. Um, I have a lot of experience on vegetable growing because uh, it's the, the, the main thing I have done for uh, over uh, 40 years in France and 25 years in Ireland. So um, I'm going to um, show you first, you know, how to build a propagator. It's one of the best investment you will ever, ever make. If I had no propagator, I, I would be uh, deprived of many, many plants and seedlings. So it's, a, it's the most important tool, piece of equipment that you can have in a garden. So the one, I, the one I'm going to explain to you is quite elaborate uh, because I took me 20 years to, to get something, you know, that works perfectly. So it's, uh, uh, it's well uh, oiled, but um, you could make a simplest one with no cable, heating cable. So I'm going to explain that, but there is some heat inside. You could make something like that, which is called a cold frame. Right? Cold frame. So it's like a frame of a, of a timber frame, like the rest bed, and uh, you have a lid on top to, to protect the plants 
and the seeds from the weather. So it's quite a simple uh, device. Um, first of all, just something quite simple. When you, myself, I have my propagator inside my uh, polytunnel, just to remind you that when you have a, a polytunnel, you have the east side, which is cold and windy, the west side, which is uh, a bit warmer, Atlantic, you know, the storm, but it's milder. So the entrance would be always on this side. Side. You have the north side, which is a cold and shade and not a good side to, to, to grow veg. So that's quite important because I'm going to explain as well where I actually uh, I had, I have set up the propagator to, to optimize the space and to have a better yield. So it would be much better if you could have your propagator inside uh, a polytunnel because you benefit from the uh, greenhouse uh, effect, which means that if you have energy inside, inside your polytunnel, you don't need to put too much inside your propagator. So you're going to save uh, energy. And after that, it's dry. So you don't have to protect uh, the heating cable, uh, all the electrical component from the rain. Um, I, I will have, have it set it up on the northwest side of the polytunnel. I'm going to show you that with a video. I have a small video and it's very easy to understand why I, I do it. And again, it could, it could be uh, built uh, outdoor. So if you want to build one outdoor, you only make a frame. You don't need any bench or something, only a clear frame with pers perspex. To save perspex and to be even better, I would, uh, if I had one, um, I would use a south facing wall. And you just put your frame against the wall. So you won't, don't have four sides, but only three sides, east, west, north, uh, south, sorry, east, west, on south facing in front of the wall, south facing. And the wall is going to um, get a lot of energy from the sun, reflect that energy into your uh, cold frame. And again, to control everything inside, you have a lead up uh, with a, an automatic vent opener. So you're going to see everything. <clears throat> so benefit of a good propagator. First, you can successfully tackle the sowing of tomatoes, basil, chili peppers, aubergine, basil. Basil needs something like 22, 24 degrees to germinate well. It needs very hot. Um, you can sow much, much earlier. So by example, myself, I have my all my lettuce sown already. A lot of lettuces. I have broad beans, I have garden peas, I have celeriac, I have some um, cabbage, cauliflower. This is sown, germinated, and that's job done. So I keep sowing from January up to um, October, November, you know. Um, but of course, the main season would be between the springtime, between say, spring to early summer. So January to May. You can access a huge range of varieties if you sow things. By example, you have more than 10,000 varieties of tomatoes. It is quite a lot. If you buy your seedlings in garden centers, you are going to be very limited. The, the, the other thing as well is that, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but Bordnamona is not extracting peat moss anymore. 
meaning that the cheap supply of uh, peat moss is going to, to go. So it's going to push the price of pots of plant, a potted plant to the roof. So I expect that the plant of any uh, pots, sorry, the pots of any plant is going to go up quite a lot. So the good thing with the propagator is that you can make your own compost. You can buy some, of course, you can buy some peat free compost and it's locally made. Uh, you have companies in Conti Meats, by example, and rich.ie where you can buy a ton bag of compost peat free for 65 quid. So it's not too bad. And, uh, you know, so or then it can be mixed with soil or, or, or whatever. So first tip when you build a propagator, make sure it fits the size of your trays. If you have plugs, if you have a uh, trays like this that I use a lot or plugs, this is not the best. You see, I have one, two, three, four, five cabbage. I have one, two, three, four, five cabbage in a very small area. So trays, seedling trays, are much more, uh, are much better um, than a uh, plug. So, but make sure that if you have a propagator, it will fit the size of your trays that you can put as much as possible. So that's what you can get. Um, going back to my place, I have, I live in Doro Contilish. I have one acre. I don't know how many varieties I saw of, of, of plants, maybe 400 or 500 types of tomatoes, chili peppers, herbs, fruit trees. I have a huge amount of, 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 plant, of, of uh, food produced in one acre. And in this one acre, I have a lot of trees, I have meadow, I have uh, bird boxes, I have a polytunnel, um, we have a a place for the, the peak as well on from horses on the house of course so i don't use the wall uh, space to grow vegetable but i have a, a system that is very intensive and by being very intensive then you can keep space for nature meadows trees for birds for insects so that's very important to uh, to understand that uh, intensive intensity is prime. If you are not intensive, you use more land, and there is nothing left for insects, and they are van vanishing now. There is nothing left for birds, and they are all going as well. So we need to change that to be more intensive. And the propagator, again, is a, a very important tool to achieve that because you can start earlier, get more crops, more rotation, uh, more succession, you know. So you can grow peppers. This one is called Marseille, I'm French. Uh, I grow a lot of varieties from France, uh, aubergine, different type of uh, peppers, and uh, of course, maybe usually 25 types of tomatoes but sometimes up to 240. Uh, this is uh, an American tomato. It's not a peach. Lucid gem. It's a very nice one. But when you get your top class veg fruit, you can get very good preserve. And uh, it's very important to have the, the I beg your pardon, the, the preserve. Uh, I do preserve a lot using salt, using sugar, using dehydration, dehydration using pasteurization, apertization, uh, using fermentation, kimchi or, or paste fermentation. So I uh, store storage in sand or compost, uh, mead, cider, cider vinegar. So I try to maximize what I have because the point is that when you have food produced, it has to be used. And preserving is a very important part of it. And if I show you this picture there, is that gardening 
is not starting in the garden. It's a mistake to believe that. Gardening is starting in the kitchen, cooking, recipes. And when you know your recipes, you know how to cook this, how to cook that, how to preserve this and that, and then you can use everything. A recipe um, is like alchemy. You can transform something simple and fresh into something beautiful, but you need to know the recipes and the magic of alchemy. If not, you produce something, but you don't use it fully. And it is, I think, maybe uh, a pity like. So this is the first video. I'm going to go to, to come in inside my polytonal and I'm going to explain the east, the west. I'm coming from the west side. So the sun is, uh, uh, that's the afternoon sun. And I'm going to show you the, the way I have set up the propagator. Uh, just from the west side, at the end, the east uh, side. On the, my right there, you have the south side. Um, the base of it is very important because it's warm. Um, it's a prime growing area for any plant. On the other side uh, of the polytonal, which is that side there, which is the north side, but not west, because west is warmer than east. So to put your propagator, I think, better to put it slightly on the west side, if possible, then it would be better to have it as well on the north side, because behind your propagator, you don't lose any very useful space. Behind you have shade, uh, you lose space, but it doesn't matter too much if the propagator is quite close to the polyton, then you optimize the space. From the... Claudia, can you hear me? Can you hear the video? It's very low, I can't hear that. It's very low. Um, okay, is there something that I can do to improve that? Um. From the west side, I is it better? Sorry. Um. From the west side, at the end, the east. Um, not really, no, I'm getting it. Okay. I get a few little words and that's it. I'm not getting the sentence. Okay. So what I just explained is quite simple. I came by the, the, the west uh, side, the entrance. This, uh, I cannot use the pointer, but you can see that uh, this is the, the east side. So this is cold. This is this. The end of the polytunnel is much colder. This is the north. Uh, this is the south side, and this is the north side. So the south side, the beds there are top class growing beds. And if you put a propagator here, it's going to shade the back because the sun is on this side, and behind the, the bench, it will be bad, shaded, no light. So instead, it would be much better to put the propagator on the left side, which is the north side, quite close to the, the opening, the door. This is the northwest. And at the behind the bench, at the back of the bench, there is no growing space. So basically you lose no growing space because behind that you have the polytene. So you have no loss, no losses or loss of uh, any uh, space. And that's very important. Um, what do you need to grow the... Uh, 
So you need an old scaffold and scaffold planks eight before. That's the old type. It's possible to get some for, for very cheaply. And you get very old uh, scaffold planks and you're not going to put two tons on that. That we're going to do. Eight by four perspex is what I have used, double wall, because double wall is much uh, sturdier. So it's sturdy, it's strong, and you can screw, you can nail, you can make lead, you can, you know, uh, build something with that. You need a warming cable. <clears throat> if you have eight by eight foot by four foot, you need 25 meters. It costs on 90 euro. <clears throat> it should last 10 years plus. You need a thermostat to regulate the temperature above say 25 degrees, it will uh, stop and then you, you, you don't, you save energy. They, they last seven years, five to, five to eight years. You need some aluminum bubble foil insulation for the back and the back side. So I'm going to talk about something like a on the floor heating system that you have in houses. You have that insulation, you put the cable on top and uh, it helps to uh, save um, energy. Automatic vent opener. If you Google, there's one called Univent uh, with a clip system. That's the one I have. It's actually a German system, 40 euro. They can lift seven kilo. So seven kilos can be lifted by those automatic vent opener. Uh, they are very handy and they can be clipped in or out, whatever. So they, they're quite good. You need an electricity supply. You need a mini maxi thermometer because you need to check exactly what's going on inside your propagator. Is it too cold, too hot? Uh, the mini maxi is quite uh, inexpensive and it's a good tool, uh, scientific tool to check what's going on. You need bubble wrap. This is to put add-on on top of the lead. If it's very cold, minus five, you can have that extra insulation on top. Then you need some expanded clay ball, the uh, clay bead. Um, I'm going to expand. To ex so this is what I use. Uh, it's where I put the pots and the trays, the everything on top of that. I don't, I do not use sand. Sand is dirty. Sand is not so good because you have root of the pots going into the sand and you start to move sand everywhere and it will draw the plant to go outside the pot, which is not good. So it's easy to clean as well, sieving. It's easy to vacuum, remove, sieve and put back to check everything. If you need to check the cable, do some maintenance or whatever. It will hold a lot of water up to nine times its own weight of water. Water is energy. So if you can hold a lot of energy in that, this energy that will be released at night. And most of the seedlings as well, they, they like something uh, humid. So, you know, it will, it will dry quick enough, but you can keep it, maintain it uh, humid. And it can be used indefinitely because you, because you can clean it and it is clean as well. You cannot have any uh, bacteria, fusarium, which is a bad one. You, you know, you, you, it's, it's kind of uh, clean. So, um, so this is the side of the propagator. I'm going to show you how it's made. You can see that you have is screwed there, there. You can see that there is a bit of two by one here. So screwed onto planks, scaffold. And at the back, I have an extra plank and I have hinges and I have a lid on top. So hopefully the sound will be good. So on top of the planks, I have uh, nailed a two by one and then have used that two by one which is inside, to, to nail, to screw uh, the, the perspex. So on top of the planks, 
you just put a layer of timber two by one and then you use it to just fix the the, the perspex and you do that as well on the side because it is close quite easy and behind the um, propagator so this is what i'm showing there is the, the north side of the, the polytunnel it's quite cold and to avoid that cold go inside the propagator so the, this is the cold side on the right and, and you have the the plank that will protect from the cold The plank as well is used to fix the hinges. And this is the lid with the hinges. You have two lid. So I just explained that you, you have the, an extra plank upside down at the back of the propagator. And it's just to make sure that the cold coming from the north side is not coming into my propagator. So it's an insulation. But I use that as well to fix a plank and a floorboard, actually it's a floorboard. And on the floorboard, I can put my hinges and then I can fix my lid. So it's a frame made with perpex, screwed on two by one, um it's very simple to to make and uh, uh very very cheap is the side of the uh, uh, is the side of the okay uh, okay now what i'm going to show is a short video i i'm going to dismantle the propagator that you can understand it so you have built a, a frame it's resting on a builder's truss eight by foot so it's good it's a good uh, height you can put your pots you know it's, 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 it's quite handy like a bit higher than a kitchen sink but it's, it's still a good height so now i'm going to remove the beads and i'm going to show you how it's or how it's made Okay, so this is uh, fully uh, dismantled. So what you what you did see is that I was removing the beads. So the bead is the final layer. Okay, I'm going to put my trays, my pots on top. I remove that, and what you saw there were slates. So I have a level of slates. I'm going to explain after. On the slate as well are there for two reasons. The first one, you can see the cables there, okay? You can imagine that if you had only sand or beads on top of that, when you put your trays or plug tray or something, you would have rows of vegetable well germinated because they are just above the cable. And then in the center, it won't be well germinated because you are just there in the middle, it's a bit colder. So to avoid that, to spread the energy, spread the heat, I use a first layer of uh, slate and it will hold as well in place the cable, okay? Then to have even more energy spreading and to have a buffer effect, Meaning that when I heat the slates, the, the heat that I have in the, the stones is going to stay quite a long time. It's a buffer. So you save a lot of energy. During the day, the heat, the sun, heat the propagator. You don't need too much uh, cable sometimes, heating cable. And it heats the slates. And back at night, 
you have all that energy giving give, uh, that goes back into your propagator. And when there is not enough, then the uh, thermostat will kick in and the cable will start to heat your uh, seedlings. So this is the bubble insulation uh, wrap. This is the cable. And um, it's made with uh, oh, sorry. Uh, trusses. Yeah. Eight foot length. So that's just the, the, the frame, the way it's made. A bit of uh, trusses. With four planks. So to protect the, the planks, I have made custom uh, polythene. So this is uh, deep. So first you put on top of the timber, you have a, a sheet of polythene. It's called uh, DPM. And it's DPM 1200 gauge because you want to protect your timber from rotting. So you have the, the timber, the scaffold, and on top of that, you put your polythene. DPM uh, 1200 gauge, just to make sure that uh, there's no water and that there is no uh, rotting of the, of the timber. So you can see that the timber is right here and then the polythene on top then i just explained there that the polythene is on top of the timber so you have the timber you have the polythene and then you have your frame very important you need a slope because if you're standing just beside your bench and if you have water flowing so you you, you could see my feet there if you water the, poly, the propagator and if you don't have a slope going the other side, all the water is going to wet your body. So you need a slope going the north side, <clears throat> the other side. Going here, you're going to be wet. <clears throat> so the water has to flow back. So the way. water flow back. So the other way, slope the other side. Going towards the side where you do not On top of the um, polythene, you have the bubble insulation. So it's used for underfloor uh, heating. It uh, helps you to save energy. And on top of it, you can see this is called a, a warming cable. So for um, build the stress, uh, the, the eight foot user size. I need uh, 20 meters of uh, cable. Okay, so uh, I went back there. So I just explained there that. Um, slope going. Okay, was there. So, for, um, so I just explained there that on top of the polythene, I have that uh, bubble insulation, aluminum double foil. I have the cable laid on top of it. And then you see that, that I have the slates. And um, it's like the, 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 the underground floor heating system that you have in all the houses. Build the stress, uh, the, the eight foot user size. So again, uh, so what you need for, um, in, in terms of uh, cable, is that you... Uh, effect. That is going to... Like okay, okay, sorry. So you need 20 meters of cable for the eight foot by four standard size of a scaffold. No, I know. So that's the another video I'm going to explain that I put the slates because I want to hold the cable in place. I don't want the cable to touch itself. And I want to spread as well the energy. Now, on top of the warming cable. So you see the cable the there. Slates. You see the right. slates. Because first of all, the cable, the 
cable should never touch itself like this. Cable should never touch so itself. It's going to, it's going to take on fire. It's going, it's going to have fire and tripping. Well apart, okay? And to hold it well apart, I can just put some space. So the, the first layer is to hold the cable. But what I've devised, what I've discovered as well, is that if you have slates, so I have a double layer of slates. And the second level is to spread the energy. Like this. So you can see that you have all the slates. That is going to take a huge amount of energy onto holding. So it, it's a buffer uh, effect. Is going to take the energy and uh, hold it for quite a while. So I just said that this is what I said before, actually, is that all the energy that you have from the uh, heating cable is going to go up because underneath you have the the, the insulation is going to radiate into the slates and the slates are going to to take a lot of energy to save it to to um, store it actually store store that would be the best uh, verb to describe it and then can release it when it's colder so you save some energy uh, okay, uh, so this is a simple video. I have my, uh, so you know now how is made the floor of the propagator. The floor is made polythene, insulation, lay the cable, and then the, the slates. And then now I'm going to put back the bits that I have removed. I removed them beforehand to show you the how it was made. Now I have a sieve. And I saved. I have uh, removed from the propagator are uh, just going to be sieved. So I just sieved them like this. And then. Then you put them back. So you can see this is clean, uh, all clean, ready for the new year. And when it's done, then you can put your uh, trays your pots, your, uh, you can start to germinate stuff. Okay, something, uh, don't want to be too complicated, but gardening is quite not complex, but you have a lot of things to know. Um, seed germination, you don't have, uh, they, are, they can be different. It's quite difficult to get a grid like this, and actually I took one that I found on the uh, internet. I was not so happy with it. And I kind of changed it, you know, a bit. You you can see that some of the um, seeds, but it's not 100% need light or shade. And then you can see that they have different requirement. Coriander will germinate at low temperature when French beans want an aubergine. Aubergine needs a lot of heat. so. Most of the time, people f failing with aubergine, it's just because it's too cold. Uh, it's same thing with basil. Basil would be, if it's too cold, you get nothing. Uh, in terms of light or shade, it's not 100%. By example, I can take an example with tomatoes. Usually, not always, but usually the, the, the big late varieties of tomatoes, like the beefsteak, the, the big tomatoes, they don't need too much too much light. When, if you take the smaller seeded one, like the Mexican one, the wild tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, they do need some type of light, sometimes. So, you know, it's not 100%, but most of the vegetables don't need too much light when they germinate, but they will germinate on top. And usually, if you have a very small seed, like celery, celeriac, I, I never bury them. They're just left on top. They are very small, tiny seeds, and I would use a spray or something. What is quite amazing there is that you have different type of seeds. They can be, they are called cold or heat or hot seed. So a, a cold seed are plants that usually grow in the springtime when the weather is, is quite cold. 
you have all the leeks, onions, the, the beans, the garden peas, lettuce, stuff like that, parsnips, you know, they don't need 25 degrees, they're not summer crops, and they, they, they are veg that are used to grow in, in colder um, area, I suppose. But what you could notice is this, cold, one of the optimum for cold is actually 15 degrees. So 15 degrees, that's not cold in Ireland. It's very warm because you don't get 15 degrees in the soil uh, before quite a long time. So that's the big advantage of the propagator is that what you can do is that you can provide the ideal temperature to your seedlings. And it means that you usually have a very good start and is going to boost the vitality, the strength of your seedlings. Um, if you have a propagator like mine with an automatic vent opener with lead opening up and opening down, what you provide there is ventilation. So when it starts to come, become too hot, too warm, it opens and then you have air, it's, then it becomes colder. And if you don't have that lead automatically opening, you're going to have that, something like that. Leggy, legginess is what you can have if you saw your seedlings inside the house on the windowsill. You have actually very weak, not so good seedlings. And that's not a good start. You, you should get something different, sturdier, smaller, more compact um, and strong seedlings. And that's what, what can give you that uh, propagator. This is uh, another uh, oh, different crops as well. You can see after when you be able to log on to the, the presentation. Um, vitality quickly is not the, the topic today, but you have to buy uh, parsnips seeds every year, every year. That's the uh, lifespan of uh, parsnip seeds one year. Uh, if not, you get nowhere. So I'm going to explain something there, is why I have two leads. I can comment with the video. So you can see that I have two compartments. So I have two compartments, two leads. And two compartments, you can see this in the center. Cold seeds, 15 degrees. At 15 degrees, it's not that cold. So if you start to sow cold seed in the ground in January, they are not going to germinate because they need at least 15 degrees to germ, to, to be able to germinate well. But so I just explained that you need 15 degrees at least to germinate stuff, plant the, the, the seeds. So it's why I have um, two compartments actually. I have one around 14, 15 degrees on the right. And I have a much warmer one for plants like basil, uh, aubergine, tomatoes and stuff like that. Tomatoes are, are, are a bit tricky. They need to be uh, germinated in the warm. So 25, 22 degrees, but they don't need to be raised at this temperature. Uh, they get too leggy. So the, they are germinated here on the cold, on the hot, and then they moved into the cold. Uh, at, they are better at 15 degrees, you know, the 15, 17, whatever. So this is ideal setup for tomatoes. But when it gets 15 degrees, uh, you can germinate all the cold seed. I was talking about lettuce, broad beans, peas, whatever. And you can germinate all the hot seeds like basil, aubergine, uh, tomatoes, uh, cucumber, melon, courgette in this bit because it's warmer. But the hot seeds, like uh, all the like of tomatoes, uh, aubergine, chili peppers, the melon, cucumber, they need a lot of heat. So I have two chambers. You can so see the bubble wrap on top, on top as well. There, and um, which is quite small relatively, so it's maybe one third of the propagator. And then I have another one there, which is much bigger because I would put quite a lot of seedlings there in the, in the early spring. So this is, you, you could see the um, 
bubble insulation. We got minus five, uh, not so long time, not so long. So I got that, um, I'm going to explain something else as well, but I have that uh, insulation on top. Um, this chamber on the right there is much bigger because that's the main one. That's for all the cold seeds on for my tomatoes. So that's, that's around 15 degrees. It's, uh, you need more space at 15 than at 20 or 22 or 23. You have to understand that. If not, you, 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 you waste energy. So you can see that I have two compartments and uh, the story there is the, what we have seen with the cold seed and uh, the hot seed. Okay, so the point there. 15 degrees, uh, 15 degrees is not that cold. So if you start to sow cold seed in the ground in January, they are not going to germinate because they need at least 15 degrees to, to germ, to, to be able to germinate well. But the hot seeds, like uh, all the type of tomato, okay, and like you can try to do something like this. That this is closer, a little bit more closer than this one. Okay, I just explaining that to to get the um, the um, different type of energy in that polytunnel, you you can use this uh, automatic vent opener, and you can open it more or you can open it uh, less. Uh, okay. okay, so I went, sorry, I get back to, to normal. Um, so, so you can see that I have two compartments and uh, the okay. story there, is the, what we have seen with the cold seeds and the, and the hot seeds. Cold seeds, 15 degrees. Uh, 15 degrees is not that cold. So if you start to sow cold seed in the ground in January... Sorry, I have to go back again because I have a problem with the video there. So we go back again. To be able to germinate well. But the hot seeds, like uh, all the... So I just explained the same thing. I have the hot seed on the left and the uh, cold seed on the right. And um, which is quite small, relatively. So it's maybe one third of the propagator. And then I have another one there, which is much bigger because I would put quite a lot of seedlings there in the, in the early spring. And this one is colder. So to achieve that, first of all, you know that the heat is provided by a warming cable. Okay. So in that one, so the small one. one of the first way to play with um, heat is to lay more cable, cable lay on more the left. So if, you have, if you have more cable on the on the left side, the, the hot side, you have more energy. You can see that this this side on the left is close closer. This one is more open, and I play with the automatic vent opener, and by uh, tweaking the, the the thread. I explain after. And it's warmer. At the end, you see the, this bubble wrap here. I have one layer of bubble wrap, but on the right there, which is the cold part, I don't. So the technique there is quite simple. This side, which is the warm side, I have laid more cable. This opening there is smaller, so it's warmer. Then, there is another technique as well that you can play with, is that you insulate a lot this one or not that one. So the way to do it is quite simple. This one, the, the hot one, you insulate, you insulate it very well with the bubble wrap 
and you don't insulate that one. So it means that that one is going to go colder than this one. This one has more cable, more insulation, is closer, is closed a bit more, so it's, it's warmer. Now, what I explain, as I can explain it, explain it uh, now, is quite simple. You see those insulation uh, bubble wrap there around? They are not really there for insulation. They are there to diffuse the light. What are the plants eating, the seedlings? They are eating light through photosynthesis. And then they can start to make sugar, starch, and they, they, they can feed the bacteria, yeast, and uh, fungi that they have on the root system on their microbiote. But to achieve that, they need as much light as possible. Just imagine that this bit there is dark, black, it means that all the light goes into the background. It's gone, lost. You have nothing left. So instead, I reflect the light with the bubble aluminum uh, foil. And the light then is going to bounce around and it's going to come back onto the seedlings and you will avoid legginess. as well, uh, not the front. Uh, the front is, uh, I, I want to, to get as much light uh, as possible through. through so you have light at the front. The back and the side are lined with uh, aluminum uh, rubber insulation. This is to reflect. And the, the aluminum be behind to reflect the light. Reflecting the, um, the corner. And that you can get the more light inside the propagator. Uh, if you don't have that, the light is going to uh, get buried into the timber or whatever. No, it is reflecting. And uh, the fact that you reflect the light means that you get stirred your uh, plant and they are less uh, stringy. That could be very important in the early spring, uh, January, February, because you have a very tiny amount of light. So it's a simple technique. I just said that in, in the early spring, the light is so scarce that you need to maximize your light for your uh, beans or potato, or, not potatoes, sorry, uh, tomatoes, uh, tomatoes, peppers. You can see all the small letters there. That was two weeks ago. And uh, you, you need, in January, you don't have too much. So this is going to improve a lot the, the, the lighting effect and uh, it will, uh, you get better seeds. You can see that the back of the propagator. So um, it's nearly the end. You need a good base, okay? Uh, uh, kind of uh, flat enough where you can uh, stand. And now, I do the potting, I have a potting bench, simply made. There's no, you know, you, when you see it, uh, first I can show you something there. You see the hinges there? Hinges, there's a plank, and you can fold it. So it's a folded bench that, for me, the propagator is the heart of the garden. It's where I would uh, pot everything, uh, just start to remove seedlings from a, uh, uh, try to plant them out or, you know, so I show you that bench. So that's it. So you save a lot of space there. You put the plank to hold it. And job done. So that's a lot of uh, space saving. So that's the course we provide in uh, Dunmore Country School, face-to-face uh, -face and uh, Zoom as well. Um, the, I got one question from um, guys from Colin Stone's uh, Men's Shed. So the question is, when should we remove the seedlings uh, from the heated propagator on where should we put them? So you have different type of seedlings, okay? 
they, they have different requirements. When you have that bench, eight by four foot, I mean, it's quite a lot. You need to grow something in it, the wall here, yeah, whatever you do. It could be microgreen, it could be whatever, but you need to use it, I think. So you always you will have plants that are going to stay inside anyway. The best one would be melon. You know, they, they can uh, use quite a lot in there. Aubergine, a bit uh, taller plant, basil, uh, peppers. They need a lot of heat and they'll be, they'll be quite happy if you have a nice cozy frame uh, around them. All the spring veg, like the lettuce, the peas, the broad beans, onions, leeks, beetroot, uh, they can be just germinated on the right hand side. So the, the cold side, uh, the, the bigger side, which is colder. And when they are germinated, uh, then you put them on, on the bench uh, inside the polytunnel or inside the cold frame outside, whatever. And if it's too cold, you can use a fleece to protect uh, uh, them. Then the frost summer veg, the frost tender summer vegetables. Those ones, they cannot be planted or put inside the polytunnel even before any, uh, the, before the frost is gone. So talking about the 24th of May, uh, depending the year, depending the, where you live, uh, could be in, in Dublin or Wexford, could be sometimes you have no frost at all. So in niche it's colder. So you have to know when is the last frost. And uh, when the warm is, when the, the ground is warm enough, so talking about mid May, something like that. Uh, before that, it would be uh, a gamble or foolish, you know, to to do too much. But uh, again, depending where you live, the shelter you have, if you beside the sea, that could help a lot, you know. So myself, I have a date which is the twenty fourth of uh, after the fifteenth of May. This year in Leash, we got up to minus seven, minus seven in May. It was between the 12th to the, the 15th of May. That did a huge amount of damage on many, many uh, fruit trees, uh, berries, had no raspberries, the apple were gone. So de depending if you have a, a cold side or not, uh, you will have to be careful. Um, so where do you get your beads? That's another question there. Uh, you can get your expanded uh, clay bead from uh, any garden center. They are like small clay bead. And they, they are used to decorate the top of pots, actually. They, so you'll find them quite easily. Uh, if you don't find them, so, you know, I use them specifically myself because they can retain water and uh, there is something that you uh, uh, that you could know is that if you take two meters of, of a blade of water in the ocean two meters on top the last two meters you have the same amount of energy in those two meters than in all the air above it's a huge amount of energy stored in water. And you can understand then that if the, the energy of the water, like the, the sea, increased by 0 0.1 degree or 0 0.2 degree, it has colossal effect on climate change, massive effect on storm. On, uh, that's the storm that we are starting to get now in September, the, the so-called tropical storms. And they do a lot of damage because they come from the southeast, which is not uh, expected too much in uh, our country. And trees actually lived for quite a long time with that wind coming usually originally from the southwest. And now they have those new storms with wind coming from another direction. And they are very weakened by that. So it's why I use the beat. Um, you, the pit, so you have a question, how will we replace the pit? Uh, peat is one was one of the worst growing medium we could never imagine because to to make it good to make it work 
you need to add product to actually make sure that the water flows in it. Then you need to put calcium because there is no, uh, P, the pH is too acidic. And then you need to put nutrients because there is no nutrients in peat moss. I, beg, I bet that you never saw any fruit trees, tulip field or whatever in a bog, there is nothing. So the, the way to replace it, um, first of all, is to uh, work with Conti Council. Basically, it's, it's the way it's done in many countries, in Germany, in France, in England, it's called green compost. It's from uh, all the, the green stuff that people uh, throw away. Uh, shreddings, shredding is quite good because you can, uh, uh, shredding is wood, and uh, if it's not from Sitka spruce, not from spruce, which is very acidic, um, you have a lot of tannin there. But if you if you use uh, wood uh, shredding, shredding from uh, ash, whatever, uh, beech or those uh, broadleaf uh, trees, it's clean. It's very clean. Uh, you could replace it as well with leaf mold. If you want to make your own leaf mold has been used traditionally for hundreds of years to make uh, seedling compost because when you harvest the leaves, it's clean, except sycamore. Sycamore is not clean because you have the, the seeds in it, but uh, the, the rest would be relatively clean. And if you have few seedlings of sycamore, it's not a, not a big deal. So I suppose that Conti Council, uh, like in France, like in Germany, like in England, will have to adapt, it will have to recycle the organic matter and uh, I know that in France, you can buy one ton of compost, uh, green compost for 30 quid, 30 euro. Uh, myself, I bought the uh, ton bag of uh, compost, green compost from Enrich. So they are based in Conti Meath, I think. And you can buy a ton bag delivered to you for uh, 65 euro. But this compost would be too rich to use it as a seedling. So it's more a growing compost than a seedling compost. So if you use it as a seedling compost, uh, you would have to add sand, maybe soil, leaf mold. It's, uh, it's too rich. Uh, two questions. Instead of the slates, could tin plate be used over the warming cable? Uh, don't use something that can conduce electricity. So. I'm not sure about tin plate. Um, vermiculite on perlite uh, could be used. I don't know how you are going to, to clean that uh, because it's, you know, it, it, we've, we've, after one year of growing a lot of uh, tomatoes, seedlings, pots, plants, whatever, it's kind of dirty inside. You have dirty leaves, you have debris. So if you have very small, tiny particles, um, you can only use that back into, for making compost maybe, I don't know. But you wouldn't be able to use that again and again and again forever. So it's why I use the, the bead because you can sieve it. Um, rope light could be you, so could rope light be used instead of a uh, warming cable? Myself, I use uh, the light uh, they are not exactly the rope light. They are lead, lead light. I don't know, I'm sure you know what it is. They are blue, uh, blue red. And you can, they come usually from China. They, they are used to grow cannabis. So you have different types. They can be square. They can be uh, flexible. And it's lead. So it's very cheap to run, but you don't get any energy. So if you want to provide energy, you would need to buy a uh, different type of flight that would be maybe more expensive to run because you would have to put those light on top of the plant. I don't know how you're going to, to get any lead. So it, it would be more difficult. So it might be easier to actually get your uh, energy under the plant than on top of it. But you can still get a, a light. Uh, so what, what height? Uh, the site of the propagator, it's um, a foot, it's one foot, 30 centimeters. Make sure that you have enough height 
to get the pot, like a four inch pot, you no know, 10 centimeter pot. So if you have a 10 centimeter pot, it's 10 centimeters gone already. So then you need, you know, uh, the, the tomato is going to grow above that. So a foot would be a minimum. It's, it's, it's quite a good, uh, a good uh, it's what I've used. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we are. Is there more question, uh, Frank? So there was one more question, if I may, about a whether you would use two power cables, one for each propagator. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm not sure. Do you have do you have two separate heating cables for the two propagator? Okay, so I'm going to show you something there. If I if I can. Uh, So basically I have only one. I'm going to, to show you there. Uh, okay. The Okay, that one. You see that one there? Uh, it's only one cable. You have more coil. So you see the space there, here, is much closer than the space here. So that's the way I do it. But you could have two, you know, but it's more expensive. Uh, if you have two, make sure that they don't touch uh, each other because then you go in, that goes into fire, so be careful. But 25 meters, the, the size of it is, it is perfect. If, even if I have minus five, minus seven degrees, with that setup, I, I stay even. So it's, uh, I find it perfect, you know, I think it's good. Uh, of course, what you need, uh, that, that, that would be the most important piece of, uh, of equipment is try to get a free uh, eight by four um, perspex or, you know, that's the, that's, that's what you need. You need uh, that piece very good. Of, uh, yeah. perspex. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Tonki. That was a, a fantastic presentation. Um, I'm not sure, Frank, because it, what what was going on? What was going on uh, in terms of sound? It, it was the, the sound feed from your laptop onto Zoom was very low. Okay. I think you need to adjust on your laptop and um, your audio output, and then it comes up to the Zoom level. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I will show it to you afterwards. But uh, uh, Claudia played a blinder. Thank you very much, Claudia. Because when you when you spoke um, over the video, it was you explained it exactly the way it is. And okay. when we watch back um, on the recording, if anyone watches back, they will be able to understand. I think very well. Okay. And, and so I again thank you very much for your time. A very You're valuable, welcome, Frank. Very valuable presentation, Claudia. Many thanks to you, and thank you to everybody who joined us. Um. Oh, sorry, one quick question before you go, Tonki. Um, what height are the sides of the propagator? What height is, is a build, you know the builder's trusses or uh, scaffold? You know those scaffold planks? Yes, or, yes, yes. I think they're about six well, to that's, eight that's, inches. Yeah. I think it's four foot. Four foot, okay. Four foot, yeah. Uh, one, one meter, 120. Gotcha, yeah. It's 120. So it's a bit above a sink, but uh, it's, 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 it's good, you know, don't yes. bend your back too much. Yeah, 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 very good. Again, so thank you very much. I okay. really appreciate your time and we will forward on any questions afterwards if you don't mind. Of course, there is no problem. Uh, merci beaucoup and, and Claudia, thank you very okay. much to you and to everyone who listened. Okay, thank thanks you. a lot, uh, take care. Bye thank bye. you Claudia and again, thanks, uh, sorry for the, not, at, sound, uh, not at all, not at all. It was great. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.